Hey guys, what is up? I am Zoned. I got a brand new video series for you guys. This time, I'm taking a look at epic replays. And to kick it off, I'm starting with a new replay from a teammate of mine. His name is Spirit Walker, and he's got this amazing replay for you guys. And I think you guys are really going to like it. I won't tell you the post-game stats. And you'll probably see them in the title, but he ends up getting 6,000 damage and 2,000 basic speed. It is an insane game. Let's get right to it. So as we're moving out here, he's playing the brand new Swedish tier 8 heavy tank called the Emil 1. This tank is a 4 shot auto loader with 300 alpha per shot and 4 rounds. It's got incredible turret armor and incredible gun depression. It's not the fastest tank in the world, but it's very, very small. The gun hits hard and the turret armor is amazing. It is almost impenetrable if it's hull down. So he's playing the Sand River Assault game mode which is a game mode I haven't played in quite a long time. And he's moving over toward the ridges. Of course, he's going to go right away, try to find a ridge he can play with, and start going hull down on some enemy tanks. He starts to take a look at this T-71. He's probably take a shot at him right here. Nice shot into the T-71 at very, very long range. He manages to get another one into him and kills the T-71, with the teammate does. So that is very, very, very impressive to him. Now he's looking for a shot in the T-60, uh, the Patriot over there, and he misses it. That's okay. He goes for the clip, and now he's decided he's going to play this ridge. This is a very, very powerful ridge to play on Sand River Assault, especially on the attack side. This ridge allows you a lot of vision into the enemy team, and you can decide what you want to do from there. But he's going to play this ridge. He's waiting for his reload to come back. He's got 583 damage already, and the game has barely started. So he's about to poke over this ridge, he's looking for that uh, Patriot, or perhaps the IS-3. He sees the IS-3, he's moving up along the outside, he gets a shot from the Hellcat, but of course it bounces right off, because this turret armor is basically just insane. Already fires around at him, thankfully it misses. So Spearwalker, he's going to move up, he's going to move over and try to take out this IS-3. I believe the IS-3 is down in the divot, so he'll have to put every round into him. But he, if he puts every round into this IS-3, he will clip him and kill him. So he's moving up. He's looking for a shot. And he's using this amazing gun approach. And he gets the drive wheel track shot, which puts a great shot into the drive wheel. Puts a second one into him. Realizes the Hellcat's on the hill behind him. Puts a shell to kill him, which is a great reaction time to see the Hellcat was there. And then puts another shell into the IS-3. As you guys just saw... He just bounced off the ice, the turret of the uh, Emil 1. The turret armor in this tank is amazing. So he backs off here. He backs off here. I don't know, press the pause button. And he's looking for more shells onto the uh, IS-3. He's just waiting for his reload to come up. He's doing a great job uh, pulling back. He already thankfully misses the shell on him. So he's looking for more shells onto the IS-3s. He's, he's got a Patriot that's being a little bit annoying over to the uh, other divot on the uh, 7 line. He decides he's going to kill this IS-3, I believe, because he needs to be removed from the game and then he can go hold down on the other IS-3. The IS-3 shoots the tank behind him, so he takes his time, puts it into the lower plate. Nice shot. The already thankfully misses him again. This Tiger 2 seems to want to really want to push him for some reason. He's still pushing him. This is uh, this is a pro play right here, Tiger 2. Tiger, what in the world are you doing? Look around, man. Tiger, that Tiger's got to push up and get out of the, the crossfire, but he decides he's just gonna keep pushing his teammate. Spirit Walker does the good. He does takes the high road, doesn't shoot him back. That's a great job on him. So Spirit Walker is just abusing this impressive turret armor here. He's going to keep putting shells into these IS-3s. He's completely hauled down. It takes another round. He's already got 1,800 damage blocked. Now he's at 2,200 damage blocked alone in the first four minutes of this game. That's really impressive. Now, already he's got done a lot of damage this game. He's done 2,500 damage so far, but he doesn't stop here. He keeps going this whole game and gets even more damage. So he's just going to go right back to this ridge. These IS-3s probably should have pushed him. I don't really know what they were thinking here. They, they're they in a platoon. They should have worked together to push him when he's on reload. They should know his shell count, but they don't. So Spearwalker comes up, decides to abuse the ridge again. Shoots the IS-3 in the flat side of the pike nose. Puts another one into him. 
and then goes for the kill on the last guy and he low rolls oh no he low rolls the is3 has only 20 hit points left and this is3 knows he's out of rounds now i believe is he gonna push him man a lot of lot of already rounds coming in as well now 2600 damage blocked and the is3 doesn't know that spirit walk is reloading oh my god he doesn't seem to know the total shell numbers of the Emil, so Spearwalker can then come back up to the hill here and put even more rounds into these Patriot that's peaking the Tiger 2. That's a very poor play on behalf of the IS-3. He should know that this tank only has four rounds. Spearwalker puts a great round into the drive wheel of the Patriot. He puts the second one in. He should get the kill right here. Gets the kill. Nice job. And now this IS-3 is coming for more, but he he's a one-shot. He's going to lose this fight. He needs to back off. And Spearwalker takes him out as well. 4,300 damage already. 2,800 block. This was impressive alone, but he doesn't stop here. He keeps pushing forward to get even more damage. As we're, and another Arty Shell just misses, thankfully. And now he's got to deal with these tanks that were camping behind the ridge line, behind the cap in their base. So he's going to move up to the next ridge line to keep using that amazing turret armor. I don't really know what these tanks were doing. This is a very poor position to be in because you can't really support your team. Your hit points are not in the fight. It's a very poor spot to defend the cap with. Late game is much better, but at the very beginning, they should not be there the whole game. You should move up to here or here or something like that. So here he is abusing this amazing turret armor. He sees the one shot. That's a great play. He sees the one shot and he takes him out. So he's removing one more gun from the fight. This SU is too exposed. He knows he can kill him. And another shot to kill the tier 7 su 12244 5200 damage done so far in a tier 8 tank and he's still there's more damage to be done this would be impressive alone but once again he's going to go for even more damage it, this is an insane replay he's at seven kills right now he's moving up to get uh his reload finished so he can use this red line to now even attack even more tanks this is the perfect map combo for this tank the AT-15 just sees him. I don't even know if he sees him. And he puts a great shell up. He sees him. Oh, no. The shell goes right over the cupola of the AT-15. And he puts one into the cupola. RNGs just be with him. Oh, no. Another one goes wide right of the cupola. How unfortunate. And then he puts another one into the AT-15. Sadly, the uh, the tier 4, tier 5 grill puts a... HE round into him. He's at 57, 5800 damage this game. That is impressive, but I think he's going to get more too. This team is not killing them fast enough so we can get even more damage in this game. So he makes a good play here. He's not poking, he's not overexposing. He knows that he has the armor, but there's no reason to poke. He's still reloading. He's waiting until he gets off reload to put a shell into the side of this AT15. He doesn't even see him. Down goes the AT-15, but his gun is broken. Can he hit the shot on the grill? Oh no, the team takes him out. Can he get more damage this game? With a broken gun, we'll have to find out. He's moving up to shoot this E8. I think the E8's gonna die to the E25 or the other team, or the uh, T-73. Oh, that aim time. Oh no, it's so bad. Oh, the shell goes wide right. He hits the T-37. Oh my God. And it bounces. The RNG Jesus is not with him in this late game. Wow. And I believe the EA goes down to the T37. What an amazing replay. This was an impressive game. 6,000 damage, 3,000 damage blocked, and 2,000 assisted damage. This tank is a beast, and this replay is amazing. Eight kills, so you got the Radley Walters. Let's go see the post-game stats. So looking at the post-game stats, these are impressive. 100,000 credits, 2,800 experience. He gets a Radley Walters medal for getting 8 kills, a steel wall for bouncing through over 3,000 damage, and a top gun for getting over 6 kills. Look at all these tanks he damaged, spotted, or assisted in damaging. That is impressive. Looking at the team score, I think this is the most impressive part of it. 19 100 base XP, nearly 2,000 base XP. That is insane. That is not something you see very often. Kudos to Spirit Walker. Really, really great play. Looking at the detailed report, he hits 23 out of 27 shots that hit, 23 penned out of 30 fired total, 
3,000 damage blocked, 2,000 assisted, and 2,900 experience. He ended up taking home a profit of 65,000 credits. This is a crazy impressive replay. Thank you for sending it to me. And if you guys got any more, send me to them in an email and I will look them out. If they're amazing, then I will post them here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.